Welcome back, YouTube. Sensei Domino here. Welcome to the Spine Ticks After Party. Got some great stuff to share with you tonight. I had three TTM returns. I also have a contest win from J Pylon I'll be sharing. I also picked up several autographed items off of eBay this week. I'll also be showing a non-sport set from the 1970s. And I'll be showing the rest of the 1977-78 Tops hockey set. But let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and start with the TTMs. I actually got a fourth TTM this week, but it's actually not for me. It's for my brother. And here it is. Uh, this comes from Portland, Oregon. And um, there's the address right there. And um, this was actually sent to former bassist of Nirvana, Chris Novoselic. And uh, I believe uh, Third Secret is the uh, new band that he's with. Um, Generally, he, sign, he um, personalizes and signs a Nirvana sticker. And um, I actually sent a couple index cards, but it looks like, I don't know, it looks like that's pretty much all that's in the envelope is this right here. So I'm guessing that this has a uh, personalized Nirvana sticker in it. Um, but it's not opened. I'm going to leave it for my brother. And um, hopefully it, it came back with some ink on it. That would be great. Um, my brother's a huge fan of Nirvana. Uh, my brother's actually in a band, if you don't know. And, um, you know, one of his biggest influences was Nirvana. And uh, so uh, I thought it would be cool to send this out to Mr. Novoselic and uh, hopefully get an autograph. So, um, you know, I might, I might um, you know, leave a note or something like that uh, in the, uh, the comments if, if there is actually an autograph in here just to uh, verify it. Um, but I'm pretty sure there is an autograph in here. Mr. Novoselic's pretty good at, uh, signing autographs for his fans. So, um, thank you, Mr. Novoselic. This is, this is great. Um, I actually sent that out last August, so it's been out pretty much 10 months, I guess. Definitely happy to get it back. All right. So this next one, this is a baseball return, uh, TTM legend comes from Atlanta Met Metro. And initials are RG, and this is the uh, second time I've sent to this individual. He also answered my questions. And if you haven't guessed already, it's Ron Gant. And he signed all five of my cards, all rookies. This is the uh, 1988 score. Let me go ahead and show you the back. Mr. Gant is uh, so nice to his fans and um, wanted to... Uh, get uh, a couple more of his uh, rookies signed. So I ended up buying these off of Com Com C, and I believe it was my last order. Um, I think I have two or three of these signed already, but since I was going to send them, send to them uh, another time, I just decided to pick up duplicates. We got here uh, the 1988 Tops Traded. And this, this might be the last time I sent to Mr. Gant. Generally, I'm mostly concerned about getting the uh, the rookies signed as far as the uh, the modern stuff. Here's the 1988 Donruss. Got the 1988 Fleer. And I'm not sure what this is. I thought it was like opening day, um, but I don't. I'm not sure that uh, 88 had opening day. I know 87 did, but uh, regardless, this is a, a 1988 Donruss. Um, pretty cool looking card. Definitely happy to get that one back. Let me let me try to center this a little better. Go. Oh. And let me go ahead and get the note. <clears throat> His answers were pretty brief, but uh, still answered the questions. So what was the greatest moment of your career? 1991 and 92 World Series. Who was the best player you ever played against? Barry Bonds. So that was cool. Um, 
Ron Gant was a, a back-to-back 30-30 guy in the early 90s. Uh, pretty good power hitter. Uh, had some nice speed. Uh, definitely kind of an all-around player. And uh, was definitely a big fan of his. So thank you, Mr. Gant. Um, really appreciate you signing these cards. Very happy to add these to the collection. All right, so this next one, this is a billiards player. This comes from Charlotte, North Carolina. Initials are AF. Shout out to Adam's Card Closet. Uh, saw that he got this individual. Uh, noticed that she was in the, uh, the Billiards Hall of Fame. Decided to pick up some of her cards and uh, sent them off. And uh, very happy to get them back. Uh, this individual is one, I, I believe, uh, 60 tournaments. Uh, she's in the Billiards Hall of Fame. And uh, I think... Uh, uh, I, I probably should have written this down, but I think she was a nine-time snooker world champion and a five-time nine-ball world champion. Uh, but this is Allison Fisher. And she's cer- certainly one of the greatest billiards players of all time. All of these are from the uh, the Goodwin Champion set. Uh, I'm not sure what year this is. Uh, 2019 Goodwin Champions. She signed that right there. I'm not sure what sort of a parallel this is called, but it's kind of got the uh, multicolored background, so this is kind of a variant, I guess. And we got her on this Gaudi. The autograph uh, showed up really nicely on this one. This is the uh, the blue version. And we got this right here. Again with the uh, the blue version. And she answered the questions. So what was the greatest moment of your career? I think winning my first world title and first national title. Who was the best player you ever played against? Efren Reyes. So that's really cool. Thank you so much, Miss Fisher. Really happy to get these and add them to the collection. All right, so this last one will be given away uh, right away because of the stamp on the envelope. Uh, This is the second time sending to this individual. And uh, the first time, um, my brother wanted the autograph. He's a huge fan of the movie series, huge fan of the actor. And so I went ahead and gave it to him. Um, Actually waited six months, then sent out again. And then it took three months to get it back. So it's been about nine months. So if you're a new subscriber, you probably haven't seen me get this yet. Um, but this is a, a fantastic TTMer. Uh, generally, when you send something off to them, they don't sign what you send, but they'll send a, you know, signed, uh, a pre-signed card. It's not a facsimile. It's actually an autograph. Um, I'm a big fan of this individual, big fan of the, of the, uh, the movies scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. Um, definitely a big fan. And, uh, here we go. San Francisco, California, Mr. Robert England. And there's the, uh, the stamp right there. It's kind of fuzzy, so I don't know if you can see that, but it's on the sports card forum if you need it. And, uh, really happy to get this one back. This one's kind of in there pretty good. Let me see if I can get it out without damaging it. Yeah. And uh, this one actually looks much better than the one that I had the first time. Um, Pull 
this out. Set it down so you can see it a little better. There we go. He signed it right here in green, Robert England. And then this time he actually put Freddie K over here in red for each side of his face. That's, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. And uh, <clears throat> he sent some other stuff in here. Um, usually he sends some info. Let me move this out of the way so I don't scrape it or anything. Show you this real quick. So there you go. Meet the man of your dreams. That's where he's going to be if you're in any of these areas. Looks like Phoenix is coming up. Nothing on the back. And then we got this right here. Sign my stuff. So yeah, Mr. England's really good to his fans. Um, you know, if you're a fan of Nightmare on Elm Street or any of the other movies or projects he's done, V, I was a big fan of V as a kid. Um, yeah, definitely uh, check out this uh, robertengland.com uh, address and, you know, send to him. I sent a couple index cards, and uh, usually he sends this right here. Yeah, really cool. So thank you so much, Mr. England. Absolutely love this. Very happy to add this to the collection. Shout out to Terror Ticks. Uh, I'm going to damage it if I put it back in the envelope. All right. So next, um, that was all of the TTMs. Uh, so next, this is the uh, contest win from Jay Pylon. This comes from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And uh, Jay has been just plowing through the milestones lately and i believe this was the uh 400 subscriber giveaway might have been 500 uh, but he, he's already up to a thousand a thousand plus subs so he's been killing it lately with the shorts and his live streams and stuff and uh i was lucky enough to win a duck race and so he sent me um kind of a care package here we go congratulations if you haven't checked out Jay Pylon's channel, go check it out. Um, he's a fantastic TTMer, and he makes some really cool customs. Uh, love his channel. Uh, check it out anytime I see that he's uh, having a premiere or a live. But congratulations at Jay Pylon 8281 YouTube. And there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Let me get it all out. All right, so first, this is a custom designed like the 1963 Tops, and it's signed by Bobby Wine. It's really cool. Next, we've got, uh, I believe this is 1983 Tops, Billy Sims. I plan to send out to Billy Sims, uh, Pretty soon, um, looking for uh, a nice uh, rookie card of his. I think he has a, a replay or something his rookie year also. I'd like to pick that up. And then maybe a second or I guess this might be his third year. Might be a second, I'm not sure. No, third year, I guess. Um, yeah, so pick up a couple more cards and send off to him. He's a great TTM or so. Uh, one, of the, one of the best... Uh, college running backs in history won the Heisman this right here I'm not sure what year this is is this uh, 63 tops I'm not sure we got Johnny Rowland nice card should have looked up what year that was. Uh, it's in the 60s for sure. 
Next, we've got this uh, Panini Prism, Tom Rathman. Nice player on the uh, 49ers in the uh, 90s. And he's, in the, he's another great signer through the mail. I guess I'll put that there for now. Next, we've got this really cool Babe Ruth. Uh, his granddaughter actually signs through the mail, uh, Linda Ruth Tassetti. And I plan to send off to her. Uh, picked up a couple Ruth cards in my uh, newest Com C order. And uh, this is a really cool one. I'll probably be sending this out as well. Some big fish. Next, we got this 1980 Frank Tanana. Very nice. It looks like there's a little bit of writing on the back. I'm not sure. Some kids' initials or something. Still really cool to get. Put that there. Next, we also have this uh, Doug Slayton rookie card signed. What year is this? 2007. Next, we got this 1969 Norm Miller. Got a 1991 Upper Deck Luis Gonzalez rookie. Great TTMer. And the last one, this is a really cool custom he did. Big fan of Mickey Mantle. This is the uh, 1988 Tops design. It's a great image right there. There's the back. Oh, sorry about the focus. Oh, that's really cool. Love this. So thank you so much, Jay. Congratulations on all your milestones, man. You've been killing it lately. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. And uh, love these cards. I'll be sending some of these out soon as possible for TTMs. Love the autographs, love the customs. It's very generous. Thank you so much. All right, next. Uh, let me try to straighten this out. This is all messed up. Yeah, hopefully that's not too bad. All right, on to the uh, autographed items that I picked up this week. So first, what year is this? First, we have this 2009 Elvis Andrews. This is a uh, rookie signatures by the letter. This is a manufactured patch but it's still signed by Elvis. I'm not sure which way is the right way. Maybe this, but I'm not sure. And this is actually numbered. I don't know if, you, if the camera will pick that up. There we go. 21 out of 60. I love SP Authentic. And uh, don't really care that this is a manufactured patch because the autograph is legit. This is a rookie card. And a uh, big fan of Elvis. He was definitely a fan favorite and uh, loved watching him kid around with uh, Beltre. Uh, he was a lot of fun to have on the team. And uh, really happy to get this. I didn't even have an Elvis uh, rookie card, so definitely happy to pick that up. I also picked up a couple rookies of another sort of fan favorite, although uh, actually I guess one of them is technically a rookie and the other is uh, a second year, I guess. But uh, this is from 2004 Bowman, and this is uh, David Murphy. 
I guess this was a, either a TTM or an in-person. This is not uh, issued by Bowman. But uh, definitely a fan of David Murphy. And so picked that up. Also picked up another one. And this is from 2005. But this is Bowman, and this is actually a certified autograph issue. There we go. It's got a little hologram right there. You can see it right there. Happy to pick that up. And I also picked up a um, autograph of one of their newer draft picks. Um, I had a price that I was comfortable going to with this. And um, I was lucky enough to win this for probably half of what I would have paid. Um, this guy has had some injury issues, but he was fantastic in college. He was a really high draft pick. Uh, I'm pretty high on the guy. Um but, you know, with the, the injuries and stuff, I, I don't know if he's going to end up panning out. So um, definitely wanted to limit what I was going to spend on this. But very happy with what I paid. And this is a Kumar Rocker Bowman Chrome certified autograph. And uh, he was drafted third overall uh, in 2022. In 2021, he was drafted 10th overall by, I believe, the Mets, but he didn't sign because uh, they were worried about some injury issues that they saw. And uh, so he went back in the draft, and he was drafted 3rd overall by the Rangers. The year before, they actually picked up uh, Jack Leiter, who was Rocker's teammate. Um, I believe it was Vanderbilt. And uh, let me see if it says, yeah, Vanderbilt. And, uh, you know... Uh, those two uh, being on the Rangers, if they uh, end up in the majors together, I think that's going to be a cool story since they were college teammates and, and did really well in college together. So uh, definitely high on Kumar Rocker and very happy to pick this up, add it to the collection. Even better that it's certified. So there we go. All right, let me go ahead and clear these off. The uh, next couple items aren't really cards. They're uh, more... Uh, Yeah, I guess there there are a variety of things, but they're going to take up a little more space, so clear those off. All right, so we'll go ahead and start with this. This is basketball. Huge fan of this guy. This guy was uh, basically Mr. Maverick before Dirk. Uh, kind of an Iron Man. He didn't really miss any games. And this is when he was with Phoenix, his rookie year into his second year where he was traded right before the uh, the trade deadline, I believe. So this is Michael Finley. And there are actually two autographs here. There's the autograph. There's one on the back as well. I just left him in the same uh, top loader they sent it in. I've got an extra one. I'll be taking one of these out of here and uh, putting it in its own. But uh, just decided to show him like this, save some space. Definitely happy to get that. He's... <laughs> In all honesty, he's probably in my top five favorite players. I just loved uh, rooting for him when the Mavericks weren't really very good. All right, so this next, this next item, really happy to get this. So this is actually three signed checks. From Lorenzo Music. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Lorenzo Music, but I'm pretty sure you would recognize his voice. Um, Lorenzo Music co-created the uh, Bob Newhart show 
he and his wife composed the uh, the theme song for the Bob Newhart show. Uh, he actually wrote for um, the Mary Tyler Moore show. He wrote for Rhoda. Uh, he was Carlton the doorman on Rhoda. Uh, so that, that would be the voice uh, uh, that you would recognize as that one. And in the 80s, um, <clears throat> he was the voice of Garfield. In all of the uh, TV specials and the cartoons, Garfield and Friends, he was also the voice of Peter Venkman on the Real Ghostbusters. And uh, if you grew up in the '80s, you probably remember the uh, Crash Test Dummy videos or the uh, the commercials. And Lorenzo Music also voiced one of the uh, Crash Test Dummies. And so, <clears throat> really happy to pick this up. Uh, he's one of the uh, more unique voice actors that I know of. <clears throat> and uh, he passed away in 2001, and uh, I actually saw this um, auction, and I, I probably had it saved on my uh, my watch list for a week and a half um, before it actually uh, ended up ending, and I was lucky enough to win this. There's actually three different checks. Um, his signature sort of changed, uh, I would probably say 1980, so... It looks like the the autographs are in two different hands, but it, it is Lorenzo Music. I've verified it. <clears throat> it did come with a certificate of authenticity, but this isn't worth the, uh, uh, you know, too much. Uh, you know, probably better than nothing, but, you know, it's not like having a PSA DNA or something. But uh, it did come with that certificate of authenticity. And uh, I'm pretty confident these are legit anyway being on checks uh, but first we got this one this is the earliest one this is from 1976 this was actually for a thousand dollars and this is for the uh, Lorenzo and Henrietta music show which they did in 1976 together he and his wife and uh, I guess I don't know if that's a salary or whatever but five percent of that one thousand and uh, there's his autograph right there and so that's what his autograph looked like in the 70s. And then right around 1980 or so, he ended up switching to this. And neither of these are um you know neither of these are really large sums, I guess. This is a dollar 94. And this is to uh, Friedman, Kinzelberg, and Broder, I guess. But there you go, Lorenzo Music. And there's there's several similarities here. I mean, if I if I look at these, uh, the Z's are right. The Z's are right. The O's right. The C is right. So yeah, he just really, for the most part, just switched up the L and the M. But yeah, it's definitely the right hand. And then here's the other one. I don't know why you would write a check for 13 cents, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here, this is Minnesota Power and Light. There you go, there's the other one. So definitely happy to uh, find these, pick them up big fan of Mr. Music, uh, love the, uh, the Garfield specials, uh, the one that probably stands out the most was the, uh, the Halloween special with the, uh, the ghost pirates or something, uh, haven't seen that in a long time, but I actually did see that they have that on, uh, YouTube, I might have to watch it someday for some nostalgia, but, yeah, big fan of Mr. Music, definitely happy to get this and add it to the collection, big fan of the Mary Tyler Moore show. Um, he also, uh, I, I guess he got his start uh, working on the uh, the Smothers Brothers uh, Comedy Hour, I believe. So, he, he's done quite a few things. Alright, so the last autograph that I picked up this week, and this is a big one. I'll just slide this on and let it speak for itself.
So this is one of those, uh, sorry for bumping the camera. So this is one of those uh, silk envelopes. And I love these. I've always wanted to pick up one of these. Actually, let me, let me pull it out of this so you don't get the glare. So yeah, that right there is made of silk and signed by Nolan Ryan. It's got the postmark. July 11th, 1985, Houston, Texas, and this is commemorating his 4,000th strikeout. Uh, he'd actually end up with well over 5,000, what was it, 5,600 or something like that. There's the, uh, the write-up right there, and this is, this, is, this is actually an envelope, so on the back you've got the little flap. But a, a big fan of these silks and obviously a huge fan of Nolan Ryan. I've got a couple of his uh, autographs in my collection from when I was a kid, but uh, I saw this and, and couldn't pass it up. And uh, I might be picking up some more of these silks in the future. But I actually found something in the, uh, the World Series program that I showed last week. And I wanted to uh, show that to you before we move on. And so this, this is from 1980, but this actually is the ad for where they would sell these silks. And so you got full color silk cachet envelopes. And these two right here were Lou Brock, Gets base hit number 3,000, August 13th, 1979. This one's Carl Yastrzemski. Gets base hit number 3,000, September 12th, 1979. And these are hand-canceled by the United States Postal Services on dates of great baseball events. And so you could actually order these, um, I guess, by sending a, a mail check or money order to this Gateway Stamp Company. And so look at this. So some of these are signed, some of these are not, but the, you could have received this Lou Brock, a set of two. There were 6,000 sets issued. 5,000 of them were personally autographed for nine ninety five a set. So a Lou Brock autograph, potentially two of them. I would guess two of them for nine ninety five. Here's Lou Brock, stolen base, eight ninety two, eight ninety three, set of two. The autographs are sold out. There were 5,000 sets issued, so unautographed, 575. Got Carl Yastrzemski right here. These were uh, unautographed, 475. Now here's the Nolan Ryan, 3,000 strikeout. So this is the, the previous one. Set of two postmark, July 4th, 1980, Houston and Cincinnati, 5,000 issued, personally autographed, 995 per set. <laughs> Then you got Reggie Jackson, one of them personally autographed, only two thousand issued for eight ninety five. Look at these prices. Al K Lion Hall of Fame induction, one of them, three thousand issued personally autographed, nine ninety five. Duke Snyder Hall of Fame induction, set of one, three thousand issued personally autographed, nine ninety five. So that's really cool, especially being from nineteen eighty. So uh, thought I would share that with you to kind of give you an idea of. A little bit more about these uh, silk cachet envelopes. And uh, definitely happy to find that and add it to the collection. Uh, it looks fantastic in person. All right, so that's all of the autographed items that I have this week. So let's go ahead and move on to the uh, non-sports set from the uh, 1970s. All right, so first, let me mention that this movie is horrendous. It's horrible. I can't get through it. Um, I, well, I, I've actually seen it once um, to see. I, I didn't realize how bad it was just to see it, and uh, yeah, it's it's awful. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's not worth your time. Your time is a lot more valuable. 
but um, the cards in the set, um, you know, obviously have some star power in it, and uh, it was relatively cheap, and so I decided to pick it up. Um, yeah, let me just go ahead and throw this on the screen. And so this is a wrapper of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Uh, this was this was made in 1978. This was supposed to be a huge movie. Um, I was reading on the Wikipedia that they thought this was going to be this generation's Gone with the Wind or something like that, and boy, did it miss its mark. Um, it's horrible. Um, but it starred the Bee Gees and Peter Frampton as members of the Lonely Hearts Club Band. Um, there were several other notable actors in the movie, including George Burns, Steve Martin, um, several other cameos. And uh, so decided to pick up the set, and we will be going through it today. There are, I believe, 66 cards, and all the cards uh, are have a, a puzzle back, and you put it together for a, a big photo. Um, so there's not a whole lot to see on the back, but let's go ahead and start with card number one. These are, for the most part, in nice shape, uh, centering issues. A couple of them might have some corner wear, but... So we got uh, Sally Faria at Strawberry Fields. Next we got Barry Gibb as Mark Henderson, part of the Bee Gees. All right, next, at the benefit for Heartland. All right, next we've got the Lonely Hearts Club Band receives a wire from BD. There you go with the Bee Gees and Peter Frampton. Big fan of Peter Frampton. Fantastic guitarist. All right, next. This one's cool. George Burns. George Burns and the Lonely Hearts Club Band at the Benefit. Again, we got George Burns, Mr. Kite, Dancing in the Heartland. So, before I forget, um, the... Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band uh, movie, uh, for the most part, used songs from Sgt. Pepper um, and uh, Abbey Road. And uh, if you don't know, those are uh, albums by the Beatles. And I'm a huge Beatles fan. Next, we have the Bee Gees as they appear in the Lonely Hearts Club Band. Next, in costume, ready to board the balloon. Next, we got Paul Nicholas as Dougie Shears. Next, we got Robin Gibb performing at Heartland. And 
next, posing in front of the Heartland Museum. The Bee Gees and Peter Frampton. Next, Heartland's Hot Air Balloon. Great one. Peter Frampton is Billy Shears. Next, George Burns as Heartland's mayor, Mr. Kite. sure which way that goes probably this way this was a great cameo Steve Martin Dr. Maxwell Edison any sort of caption. Next we got Heartland has become Sin City. Next, battle between Lonely Hearts Club Band and future villains. I don't know if you can tell, but this right here is Aerosmith. I'm not sure off the top of my head who the others are. Next, we got BD and Lucy ready to meet the Lonely Hearts Club Band. Check out that limo. Now, BD was uh, played by Donald Pleasance, and you might know him from the uh, Halloween movie series. Next, you have Strawberry Looks on as Billy performs. Next, we've got Lonely Hearts Club Band cutting their first record. Next, Clowns at the Benefit. Next, the original Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Next, we have the grand finale, although this is not the last card in the set. <laughs> Next, we've got the Henderson brothers. So that's the first group.
next we've got Dougie presents the instruments to the museum. Next, the grand lifestyle at BD's mansion. Next, the Lonely Hearts Club Band record their demo record. <coughs> Next, Maurice Gibb is Bob Henderson. Next, we got Billy Preston as the Sergeant Pepper Weather Vane. Billy Preston actually performed on uh, Get Back on the uh, actual Beatles album. Next, Lonely Hearts Club Band in BD's Oversized Limousine. <laughs> That's really cool. No caption. Billy Shears and Strawberry Fields. D.D. Brockhurst with some of the Lonely Hearts Club band. Starting the balloon chase. Steve Martin is the mad Dr. Maxwell Edison. The Sergeant Pepper weather vane comes to life. Billy Preston again. At the Benefit Concert, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Some of these images aren't the greatest. They're kind of blurry. Next, Lucy as chauffeur for the Lonely Hearts Club Band and BD's Limo. Next, mean Mr. Mustard in his van. Next, Lonely Hearts Club Band at the Benefit. Next, leaving Heartland. Maurice Gibb performing in Heartland. Next, Father Son's Temple of Electronic Cosmology. And I believe that's Alice Cooper.
the Lonely Hearts Club Band and the Future Villains. Maurice Gibbs, Bob Henderson. Not sure which way that goes. Probably that way. Next, Lucy in the Sky production number. Next, recording for BD Records. Next, the Benefit Parade. The Parade for the Benefit. So that's the second group. I believe we have like 14 more cards, 15 more cards maybe. Mr. Mustard stealing the instruments. Next, Sergeant Pepper dies at ceremonies in his honor. No caption. Funeral procession for star Strawberry Fields. Future villains. Lonely Hearts Club Band in Concert. Billy Shears. Preston, the weather vane, sings Get Back. There's a good shot of Donald Pleasance right there. B.D. Brockhurst with some of the Lonely Hearts Club band. Smith is Future Villains. Great card. Donald Pleasance is BD the Record Mogul. Diane Steinberg is Lucy. Heartland after Mr. Mustard takes over. P. 
Peter Frampton as Billy Shears. A Lonely Hearts Club Band concert. And lastly, last card of the 66, B.D. Brockhurst, played by Donald Pleasance. So there you go. There's the uh, complete set of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Again, horrible movie, but I thought the, uh, the cards were worth picking up. Uh, definitely some star power in there, and uh, very happy to get it. It's it's really affordable. Uh, I think shipped, I paid about ten dollars or so, and I think it's definitely worth the money. So hopefully you enjoyed those. All right, and last thing I'll be showing today will be the uh, nineteen seventy seven seventy eight tops hockey set. Completing that. And I believe there's 64 cards left. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, there's quite a few Hall of Famers in this group. So we've got Don Edwards. This is card 201. We'll be going from uh, 201 to 264. Gary Dornhofer, Dornheffer, not sure how you say that. Next we've got Stan Gilbertson, it's a great image. Next, we've got Alex Pyrus. Another cool image. Next, we got Peter Mahovlik. Nice player. Not a Hall of Famer, though. We got some fantastic years. Look at 74, 75, 75, 76. We had 82 assists, 71 assists, 200 point campaigns. So definitely a nice player. Next, we've got Burt Marshall. All right, next, this guy is definitely a character. Shields Graton, Looney, Looney Graton. Uh, shout out to Slappy for telling me more about this guy. Uh, he actually pointed me towards a video that was on YouTube that I checked out. And, uh, wow, <laughs> there, was, there was a lot to this guy. Um, yeah, he, he, he's called Looney for a reason. Um, this guy actually hated hockey. He couldn't stand hockey, and I think it was... Uh, according to the documentary, he was he, it was partly because when he was a kid, uh, he suffered two concussions and it made him sort of hate hockey. Um, but he was good, and um, you know he continued to play basically because if people were willing to play, I, I I might be paraphrasing this, but he said you know if people are willing to play uh, pay him to do nothing, then he's going to take the money. Um, but yeah, he he would do anything he could to not play. Um, he would tell his coaches that he couldn't play because the moon was out of alignment in the sky or the, the stars weren't lined up correctly. And <laughs> def definitely a character. Uh, he almost quit hockey to be a Tibetan monk at one point. Um, really interesting story. Um, if you just look up Gilles Graton, 
on YouTube. Uh, there's like a 15 minute documentary or something on this guy. It's definitely worth watching. Um, but what he's mostly known for these days is, is probably a mask that he unveiled in 1977. That was, a uh, like a, a tiger mask or a cat mask, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it looks amazing. And so he's mostly known for that these days. Uh, from, from what I've seen on, uh, Sports card forum. He's actually a pretty decent signer. Um, this is the only Gilles Graton card I have, and it's part of the set, so I don't really want to send this out. But I definitely wouldn't mind sending off a couple cards to him to get signed. Um, <clears throat> definitely an interesting character. Um, towards the end of the uh, documentary, um, you know, he actually had a, a quote of what he wanted to have on his tombstone or something like that, and you know, it basically said that, uh, here's a guy that did nothing, but he was happy or something along those lines. Um, but yeah, he, he really is sort of a free spirit and, uh, he thinks he was like reincarnated multiple times and he'll tell you about his past lives and yeah, definitely a character. Uh, I haven't heard, uh, of too many people that are as, uh, interesting as this guy <laughs> definitely has a really cool story. So, uh, anyway, move on to the next one. Elaine Digg. Next we got Chris Odeleafs Odeleaf Odeleafson. Chris Odeleafson. Probably butchered that. Uh, Leafs. Gilbert Perot, Hall of Famer. Bill Lockhead. Next, we got Dick Redmond. Next, <clears throat> Hall of Famer Guy Lafleur. This next group of uh, cards are like record breakers. Record breakers. Lafleur finishes with record 136 points. Most points, he's in right wing. <coughs> Next, we got Ian Turnbull, most goals game defenseman. Turnbull scores five goals in one game. It's a defenseman, that's crazy. <laughs> Here we go, another Guy Lafleur. Longest point scoring streak. The floor point streak at record twenty eight. Next we got Steve Shutt, most goals season left wing. I believe I have this Opeachy card. Shutt's sixtieth goal sets new standard. He was a nice signer for a while. Next, we got Guy Lafleur, most assists season right wing. He's got quite a few of these in the set. Lafleur's 80 assists breaks NHL mark. So what did Lafleur have? Three of these record breakers. So that tells you the type of season he had this year. Next, we got Lauren Henning. Next, we got Terry O'Reilly.
thought I saw a crease, but no. Next, we got Pat Hickey. Next, we got Rene Robert. Robert Robert. Probably Robert. Next, we got Tim Young. Next, we got Dunk Wilson. Next, we got Dennis Hull. Nice player. Not a Hall of Famer, though. Next, we got Rod Sealing. All right, next... Uh, this is Bill Barber, Hall of Famer. Uh, this was one of the cards that I actually needed to pick up that was missing from the set when I bought um, you know, a large chunk of this set off of eBay. Uh, this was one of the cards that was missing, so I got this off of Com C, and it looks fantastic, but it's got a crease in it, so I'm going to have to replace this. I do have um, this card as an Opeachy, um, but I don't want to have an Opeachy in a top set, so... Uh, I'm going to have to replace this at some point. But uh, still, definitely a nice player. Fantastic TT Emmer. Uh, I've already sent to him and received, uh, I believe, three or four autos back. So definitely a fantastic TT Emmer if uh, you're interested in getting a nice Hall of Famer. Next, we got Dennis Polinick. Next, we got Hall of Famer Bill Smith. Another fantastic TT Emmer, Yvonne Cornway, yay, the Roadrunner. Uh, what I've seen, he generally doesn't sign the stuff that you send, but he'll send back a uh, little 5 by 7 signed. Received him back uh, probably about a month and a half ago. Next we got Don Luce. A pretty nice player. Next we got Mike McEwen. about halfway through the set. Hopefully you've, been, you've enjoyed uh, seeing this set over the last uh, several months, I guess. I've sort of spread it out. Next we got Don Seleski. Wanted to sort of enjoy this over a longer period because this is the uh, oldest set I've ever been able to put together. Pretty excited about it. Didn't want to blow through it in one video. Next, we got Wayne Cashman, nice player. It's a great image right there. Look at that. <laughs> I love it. Next, you got Phil Russell. That's another really cool photo.
Next, we got Mike Corrigan. Next, we got Guy Schoenard. Not sure how you say that. Let me move this out of the way so I don't knock into him. All right, so next we got Steve Jensen. Jim Rutherford, pretty sure he's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's in the Hall of Fame. Next, another Hall of Famer, Marcel Dion. Next, we got Rajan Hool. <laughs> Don't know how you say that, Rajan Hool. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I butchered that. Next. Uh, yeah. Jocelyn Guivremont. <laughs> Wow, I'm butchering these. Uh, Jocelyn Weaver-Mont. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. Next, we got Jim Harrison. Next, we got Don Murdoch. Oh, I actually skipped over a card that was top loaded. This was a card to 11. This is the, the greatest rookie in the set. This is Mike Palmatier. Yeah, that was card 211. We're 244 now, and uh, we have another top loaded card coming up here in a minute. Uh, next, we got Mike Green. Next, another nice player, Rick Middleton. Next, we got Joe Watson. Next, we got Sill Apps Jr. He's a pretty nice player. Next, was this, this was another card I had to replace on Com C. It's got an enormous crease in it. So I'll have to replace this one as well. I don't like how uh, Com C sort of puts their watermark right here. So you're looking at the card and you get creases like this at the bottom of the card and you can't even see them. So a little disappointed in this one, but what can you do? Next we got Clark Gillies. I think he might be a Hall of Famer. Nelson Pyatt. Next, 
next we got Gary McAdam. Oh, just past the other one. Uh, we're on card 253, but this is 251. It's probably the most valuable card in the set. Bobby Orr on the Blackhawks. That looks weird. All-time great. Legend. Huge fan of Bobby Orr. It's a great card. All right, next we got another Hall of Famer, Jacques Lemaire. Next, we got Bill Fairbairn. Only a handful of cards left to go. Next, we got Ron Reschner. Ross Lonsberry. Dave Gardner. Oh, I thought I saw another crease, but no. Rick Blight. Another Hall of Famer, Jerry Cheevers. I got his OPG card uh, signed from this set, along with several others. Fantastic TT armor. Next, we got Jean Pronovost. Pretty nice player, not a Hall of Famer. And these are kind of cool. So these are uh, sort of Stanley Cup highlights, semifinals, Canadians, skate past Islanders. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. This one's a little rough. I didn't see a good copy on Com C, so I just sort of kept this around, but it's sort of curled up right here. Definitely some corner issues. But uh, Bruins advance to finals. see the damage on that but it's it's a little curled up I guess I don't think that's going to show up yeah I definitely have to replace this at some point and the last card of the set and the video Canadiens win 20th Stanley Cup this one's got a little bit of a rough corner as well Last card of the set, not surprised. Yep. All right. So that's the seventy seven seventy eight tops hockey set. I want to thank everybody for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope everybody has a great week. Hope everybody has a great weekend. 
And uh, until next time, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.